This is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association, located at 1601 East 18th Street, Suite 200L. What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Today we are filming in the historic 18th and Vine Jazz District at the Lincoln Building. This special segment is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association. My special guest today has recently earned your vote and is now serving in the 5th District at Large Kansas City Councilman, Mr. Lee Barnes. Welcome to the show today. What's up, Kansas City? What's up, Mr. Barnes? Uh, we want to talk to you a little bit about the transition. How has it been going uh, uh, from your uh, your last position now to city councilman. Well, uh, it's it's going pretty good. It's uh, a lot of things to learn, a lot of things to get um, arms wrapped around, but it's going pretty well. Uh, trying to learn the policies and the mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, kind of the culture of of Kansas City and see how I can uh, infuse some things that I that I know that will help our community mm -hmm. in terms of changing some 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 of the dynamics and some policies that will. Uh, directly affect Kansas City within the 5th District and the urban core in general. Now tell our viewers the 5th District, I understand that it, it encompasses part of South Kansas City? Sure, uh, the boundaries of the 5th District are essentially on the north end, 51st Street, uh, the south end out to 103rd Street, uh, west, west side uh, over to Troost, and out east as far as uh, Lee Summit Road. So 103rd Street, that's rough to Hickman Mills High School? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, let's talk about some of the goals that you had when you initially ran. Uh, one of those was economic development and jobs. We know that the minimum wage debate has kind of, it, it, it gained some strength for a while, and now they said that it's not going to be on the ballot. Understand that uh, Taylor, uh, excuse me, Taylor Field, uh, Fields and Brown Law Firm, is appealing the decision and wants to get the, uh, the issue put to the voters. Uh, but as of right now, it's no vote. Well, What's going um, on? The, the issue with that, um, and as a solidarity vote, I, I voted uh, with Jermaine Reed to uh, uh, to repeal, uh, not to repeal the ordinance that uh, we had as a city. Um, but the the central crux of that is the minimum wage law is a state law, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. city council. Uh, we can, you know, we can try, and, and what we did was try to enact a, a local uh, ordinance that will kind of push the state to re-examine mm -hmm. uh, whether local cities or municipalities can change the state law for their particular, um, uh, for their particular city. Uh, but there were a couple of bills within, state, uh, within the state legislature that they pushed through to make sure that that wouldn't happen. So... Uh, as a matter of um, as a matter of law, we we basically had to repeal uh, mm -hmm. our uh, our ordinance in order to uh, stay in somewhat of good favor with the state in terms of other things that we have to get done, uh, like tax credits for certain parts of the city mm -hmm. and, and those kind of things. And uh, you know we can you can you know can be obstinate about certain mm -hmm. things, but if if you know that what you're doing is uh, unlawful per se. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no need to, you know, start a fight that you know you can't win. So, well, is there a way to work around it, uh, Councilman Barnes? How do we uh, hit the right chords on this? Because I know that this is not just a local issue, but it's national as well. That uh, Mr. Terrence Wise, who is from Kansas City and has two jobs, recently was uh, President Obama's kind of poster. Uh, speaker at the Workers' Voice Summit, uh, mm -hmm. where President Obama talked about implementing policies and procedures to raise that minimum wage to fifteen dollars. What can we do, if anything, to reflect, uh, you know, popular uh, public sentiment on on this issue? Uh, well, it, it's it's going to start. It starts locally, but then you have to spread that uh, to your state level, mm -hmm. uh, and in each state, uh, like here in St. Louis, we're both. Uh, both of the city councils have tried to enact a, a local policy. Uh, but what now has to happen is those individuals who were championing the, uh, the lo those local levels now need to spread out to the state level and uh, get the colleagues, their colleagues and state reps to mm -hmm. understand the situation in which, in which we live in terms of uh, having people working for minimum wage, which is not a, a livable wage, and folks having to work two jobs mm -hmm. just to make ends meet. Uh, and that happens quite a bit in, more in the, uh, in the urban core, but uh, we still need to get the, uh, 
uh, the help of those uh, suburban and rural folks at the state legislative le level. Now let's talk a little bit about the convention center. What's going on with construction of the convention center? Uh, nothing at this point. Um, prior to uh, myself and eight other members of the council getting elected, the uh, the council convention hotel, rather I should say. Yeah. Uh, prior to nine of us getting elected, the uh, council uh, agreed to uh, allow a hotel to be built uh, with. Um, about $35 million worth of, of uh, city, city bond money. Mm -hmm. uh, supposedly the rest is going to come from developers and uh, some tax incentives and those mm -hmm. kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been some contracts signed and, uh, and that thing was moving forward. Uh, what now has happened is we have a, a, uh, some petitioners mm -hmm. who have uh, petitioned that a hotel not be uh, downtown hotel not be built and put that uh, issue to the voters. Yes, unless there is a, a vote of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, the one issue with that is that since there are contracts signed with uh, with the developers, uh, as a city, we don't know whether we can just negate those contracts and put that on the, on the uh, on the ballot. Uh, those things are being talked about within uh, within our you know with our council. Uh, we're, we're seeking legal advice and trying to move, seeing what, what we can do to move uh, and what the next steps have to be. Earlier we had Ms. Uh, Stacy uh, Johnson Crosby on and talked about the Kansas City South Alliance. Cerner Corporation, can you tell us what's going on in South Kansas City in terms of economic development? Uh, we ride past the old Banners from all site all the time. And there's a one loan building where, um, what is it, War Parkway, the service center used to uh, have his heck, have his quarters. What's going on with the uh, the jobs and, and the community development that we so optimistically are, are, are planning, in the early planning stages of? Yeah, optimistically, uh, the the number that, that they say is going to um, come out of that development is going to be 15,000 jobs. Uh, you know, that's, that's yet to be seen, but what, what we have to do as a city, in my estimation, is to make sure that um, a project of, of that significant size um, has all of the tools that we think are important mm -hmm. in terms of its development. Number one, uh, are we having local workforce uh, on the job? Number two is, uh, is our MBE businesses getting access to uh, getting access to some of the work out there. Mm -hmm. If we've got that much work, you know, uh, estimate a number of, of up to four billion dollars. Uh, there should be a substantial amount of uh, work for MBE companies uh, to develop and grow uh, on this particular part project because uh, it is like a 1.4 billion dollars of uh, uh, tax incentives that. Uh, going along with that project. And these are the types of talks we're having with Cerner Corporation executives early on to ensure that it does happen? Well, uh, that we have a voice in, the, in these matters. Um, my colleague and I, uh, Councilwoman uh, Alyssa Kennedy, mm -hmm. have uh, started started these talks uh, since we've been on, on, on the council. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how, when, how what kind of talks were, were, were being had prior to us getting uh, on the council and understand that that project uh, has been in the works for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and after 60 days, I think we, you know, we've made it known that we want to have, particularly because it's in our district, and we want to make sure that uh, we have local workforce uh, issues covered as well as uh, MWBE issues covered as well. That's Minority and Women Business uh, Enterprises. So we are, we are going to be championing um, those efforts. Kelly, let's talk about your second point, uh, reduction of crime rates. Uh, we know that on October the 10th, it was reported that um, the Kansas City Police Department had reported 77 murders, and that's just one less that was initially recorded of all homicides of 2014. At least 16 children and councilman bars have died in area homicides since last October. Of the 16, five cases remain unsolved. We have had Police Chief Daryl Forte on before, and last year we know that the Kansas City Police Department was was uh, applauded for its reduction of crime. What seems to be occurring this year to where uh, two weeks ago, and I'm sure that figure that number has since been updated, 
we're only one shy of the total homicides, mm -hmm. and we're still three months in. Well, I think we have to, uh, that's a community-wide effort. Mm -hmm. uh, as a community, we have to not just look to the police to uh, help with this crime issue. I think we have to kind of look internally mm -hmm. uh, to say, hey, you know, brothers and sisters, how are we going to address each other in this community and make sure that everyone is safe, make sure that everyone has uh, what they need to, uh, to, uh, to be safe. Uh, so I, I don't necessarily know if it's a, a police issue, uh, but it's a community neighborhood public safety issue mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how we can work together to help mitigate any of these situations mm -hmm. that occur uh, before it gets to the level of, of, of that kind of violence. And how do you feel uh, police relations are between the citizens and the police force here in Kansas City? Are we a, a model, a positive model of, 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 you know, the Black Life Matters movement of what can occur in neighborhoods with good police uh, community uh, relations or do we still have some work to do in that? that I, th I think we still have some work to do, but I think we are, 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 are moving much further along than other communities. Uh, but it, there's always work to be done. There's always room for improvement. Okay, let's talk about the third uh, facet of your uh, goal issue. Uh, abandoned and neglected properties in the 5th District. Is there a vacant housing problem? Very much so. Very much so. And we, we, we have to address that uh, in several ways. I think we can address it in several ways. One, um, putting the task force together to determine uh, how we're going to look at uh, whether houses need to be uh, uh, torn down or whether they're in a condition in condition to be rehab. Uh, my colleague again, Alyssa Kennedy, is uh, uh, chair of the neighborhoods uh, committee, and she and I, I'm, and I'm trying to work with. Her, I'm working with her, uh, trying to establish uh, within uh, council departments. Uh, situations where we can come up with grants for property owners to buy houses or buy houses or, or vacant lots that are next to them and uh, give them um, dollars to be able to repair those houses to get them to the point where uh, we can uh, have they become inhabit uh, habitable again. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's move on to education. Uh, we know that uh, recent test scores were released by the Missouri Education, um, the, the, the people who test us. Mm -hmm. And we know that Hickman Mills was doing good last year, and, and now this year we are significantly, we've had a drop. So has Kansas City, which kind of threatens uh, us moving from provisional edu uh, accreditation into um, real life accreditation. What seems to, what can we do? I know we have a transition of superintendents in the Kansas City Public School District. And of course I'm wearing my t-shirt, a proud <laughs> Upper Room. Uh, yeah. I want to mention your, your role with Upper Room. Um, I, I did work at one of the sites in 2013. So we do have an educational, uh, we have someone here who has experience with education. How can we uh, turn, um, have a positive result, and also uh, broadcast some of the other positive uh, things that are going on in other school districts, Raytown, Blue Springs, and charter schools? Well, I, I think we first have to uh, give support to uh, the school districts. Uh, there are 14 school districts within Kansas City itself. Um, and by giving support, I mean organizations like the Upper Room, like LINK, uh, if we allow them to uh, do what they do best and, and uh, not to just toot, you know, toot the horn of the upper room, but we, uh, we've had significant uh, success in some of the things that we've done mm -hmm. in terms of education with our summer school programs. As and well as doing, our, there's a tutoring program going on right now. And our after school Very programs that we, uh, that we work within churches uh, throughout the city that have, uh, uh, and we provide this service free of charge to the students. Uh, you know, we work off of, you know, getting grants from the state, uh, from federal grants or what have you. Uh, and it's imperative that the school district works with these organizations to uh, get that support that they need and understand that <clears throat> community-based organizations are not necessarily trying to uh, do the job of the school district, but we're trying to provide a safety net and a, and a support system 
that will help the students be able to uh, prosper and, and move forward. I know Councilman Barnes, yesterday UMKC hosted uh, educator Steve Perry, Dr. Steve Perry. He has a book out, When Push Comes to Shove, get, get, giving, Getting Our Children the Education They Deserve, and he calls himself the Educational Reformist. Um, are, are, are teachers doing the job? Are, are teachers qualified and, 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 and giving our students resources they need to be successful later in life? Well, I, you know, I think, I think most teachers are qualified, but I, I think we sometimes put systems in place mm -hmm. that inhibit uh, teachers point. from uh, doing what, uh, what needs to be done. Now, I often say you know, what teachers need to do is go in, there, go in and close the door mm -hmm. and lock it and, and get to teach it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have all of these different reforms mm -hmm. about how to educate children. Uh, but the essentials are reading, writing, and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. And if once we continue to infuse those things into a, a child, now, and, and, and understanding that society, is, being that it is now, we have a lot more issues that, that, that young people are faced with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that they may not have been faced with when, when I was uh, coming up. But we have to put systems in place to handle those things as well. Mm -hmm. But the core and basic um, essentials of education, the reading, the writing, and the arithmetic, have not changed. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've added was that we've added technology, which should uh, uh, make it somewhat easier to educate uh, as, a, as an enhancement to some tools that we have. Uh, but we need to use those tools, the, the technology tools, to do those core and basic things. And what is it about uh, us, I don't know if it's parenting or the community, that has allowed a, a child to say, well, I'm accept this or not accept this. And I'm kind of referring to the incident in South Carolina where the student was asked to put up her cell phone and she said, no, uh, I'm, not at, I'm not taking the policeman's side or her side. But to say no to an adult, you know, when I was in school, you know, you know that's... That might have been the end of it right then, but it's not going to be the end of it. You know, when you get home, it's, there's going to be some consequences up to a certain point. Um, you know, are, are, are children accepting of, you know, the education that we're trying to give them? And if not, what, what can we do to modify that? Well, I mean, it, 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 a lot of that starts at home, and you have to make sure that the, the home environment is such that uh, the children understand the basic need for an education. A lot of times kids don't understand why they need to be educated. Uh, if, if they don't see uh, adults around them that are educated and, and doing well with their education, um, if they can't see themselves in that position, uh, it makes it a little more difficult for them to understand why, why there's a need for that. To a good point. Now, Councilman Barnes, tell us a little bit about yourself. I understand you were educated right here in the Kansas City uh, School school district system. You stayed yes. after you graduated and came back with a degree in engineering. You went to Central, am I yes. correct? Yes, yes. Uh, 1982, uh, Central Blue Eagles. Yes, sir. Awesome. That was the year before my brother was born. Do you <laughs> stay in contact with your, your alumni association? Yes, yes. I've got uh, uh, several friends that we uh, we try to have at least uh, breakfast once a, once a quarter just to, uh, it's about five to ten of us. Uh, just to stay in contact to make sure that everyone's still good. Now, who were your role models and inspiration growing up? Uh, who, who did you count on? One of the things that's somewhat different now than, uh, than when it was when I was coming through, uh, I played baseball, and it, we, we had a core group of uh, guys that played baseball, and that's what we did all mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. And we developed a sense of camaraderie, a sense of team, um, and that, I think, helped me uh, kind of develop the sense of uh, hard work and the coaches that we had, uh, you know, infused, you know, that, that sense of hard work. And one of the other pieces of that was that each of us had parents that were uh, involved in our team. So uh, not only did we uh, have a sense of uh, teamship with the, with the players that we played with, with the coaches that we were uh, uh, working under, but we also, when we got home, our, our parents infused 
uh, that whole sense of com family and camaraderie and teamwork mm -hmm. within us as well. Now, what position did you play? I uh, played shortstop and second base. Now, are you a Royals fan? Are you yeah. Following the oh, yeah. Series? Yeah. Following the series. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I want to move on here because I understand that you're a very busy man. I'll give you the last word. Uh, what do you look for to most about being a uh, Kansas City Councilman of 5th District at large, Mr. Barr? Well, I, I just want to be able to uh, use the talents that I have to make sure that we have uh, I'm IFBB Bikini Pro Cat Williams, and when I'm not working out in the gym, I'm searching the web on Cascade Media and What's Up Kansas City. So make sure you check them out.